How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now with me making all of the mining videos and then also the GPU war videos where I compare GPUs against each other, uh, I wanted to find out how much clearance you would need between uh, GPUs that you add onto the motherboard, how much clearance you would need before they actually burn out or just potentially you damage them because they get too hot. Because for mining, of course, you add your GPUs onto risers, which you can put as much space between them as you want. Uh, so it's not really going to be a problem for that. But if you add them directly onto the motherboard, there's not really too much space. And especially if you're uh, doing Crossfire or SLI, there's not really too much space if you dock them onto the motherboard board if you're running two-way three-way or even quad crossfire or just sli two-way because you can't uh sli more than two ways now but yeah i just wanted to find out how much space you would need before they actually get too hot they start to thermal throttle and then you potentially damage it so I decided to test that out today uh, where I would use three GPUs, dock them onto my uh, Threadripper uh, ASUS X399X motherboard, uh, dock them inside there all three under, underneath each other and then find out what the temps would be because uh, will they get enough air, won't they, uh, what will the temps be and then also I did uh, do three way, two way, just a few different uh, configurations were where I added the GPUs just to find out what position or what how much space you would actually need for the GPUs to run properly and not get too hot. Now as you guys can see behind me uh, for the GPUs that I used I used my ASUS Trix GTX 1066 gig that was usually the top one and uh, then I have my Gigabyte G1 uh, 1063 gig which is usually the middle one and then the bottom one was my, my Aorus uh, RX 570. So they're all three are different cards, they're not exactly the same, so that will play a factor as well, just keep that in mind, I don't have three of the exact same card to do this test unfortunately. So uh, the, the, some of the temps will be a bit different, but, but mostly the temperatures won't differ that extremely much just because they're a bit different cards. Now also for the testing, I ran all of the cards and all of the, my tests, uh, the fans at 75%. So that, so that just set a basic standard for all of the cards for them to run at. And then also, I didn't really know what was my ambient temperature in my room, but it was a relatively cool day, probably about 27 degrees, so it wasn't too too hot or anything, and uh, my, my room was relatively cool. So that will play a factor, but it wasn't luckily too bad. But now, with all of that being said, uh, let's get into the benchmarks and see how they did right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get into the crypto mining world? Well, Rebeltic is the best place to get all of your mining hardware at extremely low prices. They have a massive range of graphics cards, motherboards and everything else you would need. So click on the link in the video description to go visit Rebeltic and start building your new mining system. Okay, so then for the first test, I only tested the one Strix card at the top and it reached a temperature of 63 degrees. For the next test, I added in the G1 at the bottom and the bottom one reached 62 degrees, whereas the top Strix card jumped from the 63 degrees to 70 degrees. That's because the temperature in the case would go up because there's another card that will produce heat. For my third test, I added the G1 in the middle. Now, keep in mind, there was a, about 2.5 centimeter spacing between the two cards. Uh, I, was, I did run a test where they were directly against each other. But for this test, I saw about 75 degrees on the Strix card, the top card, and 63 degrees on the middle card. So that already added five more degrees for the top card just because how closer they were. As for the fourth test, I added the G1 a lot closer to the Strix card, uh, where you can see it already bumped up quite a bit from 75 degrees to 82 degrees for the top card. For the middle card, it jumped from 63 to 65. As for the last test, I added all three cards and kept a bit of a space between the top and the middle card. So for the top card, it reached 82 degrees. For the middle card, it reached 83 degrees. And for the bottom card, it reached 69 degrees. 
Now, of course, the reason for the high temperatures is because there's not enough room between the cards for the cards to get sufficient airflow. So if you looked at the final test where I added in all three cards, the middle card was the hottest because the bottom card was so close against it that it didn't get sufficient airflow. There was a bit of uh, some distance between the top card and the middle card. That's why it was a bit cooler. But overall, the closer the card is to each other, the hotter it would be of course. But then if you take a look at the second test I ran where I ran the top card and the bottom card together, the temps weren't too bad there. The top card reached 70 degrees and the bottom card reached 62 degrees. That's because there was actually enough space between the cards for the cards to get sufficient airflow. But once you added the bottom card to the middle, the top card didn't really get enough airflow to run properly and it shot up to 75 degrees or even 82 degrees if uh, when I added it straight against the top card. Also with these cards, I did see that they started to thermal throttle when they reached about 82 and 83 degrees. So that is also something you have to keep in mind that you are gonna get some reduced performance because of the cards running that hot. The cards can handle a lot more than that. They should be able to go up to about 90 degrees quite, quite well. I wouldn't recommend that it goes that high or keep it lower than 80 degrees just to be safe, uh, but it should be able to handle higher temperatures but now if you also want to run cards that close against each other you can go for a blower style fan like the founders edition cards or the turbo turbo card from asus those ones use the, the blower style fan which instead of blowing all of the air inside the case where the inside of the case would get a lot hotter it blows the air out through the back so you can stack those cards a lot closer to each other but now the thing with those cards is that they do run quite hot uh, overall. Usually at the high temps, they reach about 85 degrees on load. So again, they can handle those temperatures, but they do run quite hot. But again, you can stack them underneath each other and they will run fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to find out how close you can stack your GPUs against each other before they actually get too hot and again, potentially damage the card. But now I did also make a video on how many GPU fans your GPU would actually need to stay cool. So three, three versus two versus one fans, uh, how many fans you, your GPU actually needs to stay cool. So if you want to watch that video, you can check out the video up there. It should be up there. So yeah, you can watch that video to find out a bit more. But yeah, that, anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please like, share, and comment like always. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos I should make, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.